Hello there! This video is not for small boys and girls at the age of 13 or under. If you're over that age, however, then please stick around, you might enjoy it. But again, not for babies. So yeah, originally I wanted to release my Virgil video today, but since this will be my longest in the mind of yet, I don't want to rush it. So instead, I wanted to make something else. To work as an appetizer, if you will. Didn't particularly know what I wanted to talk about, I don't really want to make this channel a landscape of throwaway videos to be forgotten tomorrow. So I looked at my previous DMC thing and I noticed this line. The narrative starts off great, takes a nosedive when you change character at the midpoint. When I heard this line again, I started to wonder, why? So to make sure that I don't sound like a Devil May Cry fanboy who can't see any flaws in this franchise, I decided on making a video explaining my issue with, and I know this will rattle some people, the inclusion of Dante in Devil May Cry 4. So as this video will most likely be a very short one, let's just segment it all. Starting with probably the most talked about issue when it comes to the entirety of this game, the gameplay. Mechanically speaking, there is nothing wrong with how Dante plays. If anything, before the newest installment, this was the best feeling gameplay-wise when it came to the youngest son of Sparta. Remember, this was where they introduced style change on the go, rather than going through menus. This did mean that we did lose some extra styles, I was always quite fond of Quicksilver, but I heavily prefer the change playstyle in combat, rather between the battles. The issue is, of course, the single fact that you are quite literally backtracking the entire game without a shred of originality for our boy, aside from the worst boss in the game, the savior. The only differences being some of the new enemies. The Beyblades, Mr. Electric Boy, the Fire Doggos, and maybe some other type of monster that I can't be asked to search up. Oh, that's right, Coppa might be a thing. Ass! There are also the bosses, the only one they do not share being Dante himself, Credo and the Pope, but Burial, Icefrog and Echidna all face off against the two heroes. You even face Agnes with both of them. The repetition of these fights are probably the main reason for why I heavily prefer the encounters in the other games, even when these ones have a lot of interesting attacks, mechanics, etc. The reason for why Credo is one of my favorite fights throughout all of these games is that you fight him only once. No rematch, no boss rush encounter, only once. So that's everything on the gameplay side. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you realize that half of the game is just everything in reverse, it's a massive flaw, let's be fair. Probably the reason for why I did not enjoy Special Edition that much. They simply allowed us to go through it all again with Lady Trish and Virgil, the most OP guy ever. But we're not talking about him yet. Seriously, give me a few more days, please. No, we are talking about Dante. But let's say hypothetically that the Dante part of the game was fully fleshed out. Completely original, different areas, more monsters, and completely original bosses. Would that make the experience better? Well, of course it would. It would feel like a more complete game than what it is right now. But uh, the thing is that, while it will fix the gameplay section for me, this guy, well... As I showed earlier, I did state that I feel that the story falls apart when Dante comes into the picture, which is a massive claim to make. What, would I prefer that he stayed out of everything? Not even showing up in the game? Not after having played DMC5, I do think that there should be a connection between the legendary demon hunter and the protagonist, but my biggest issue is this. Dante has no issue in dealing with any opponent. He's never stressed, never pushed to his limits. We see him more holding back and then going all out, quipping throughout the entire story, and so much more. It simply makes me think that even if Neo were to fail to stop Sanctus, Dante could simply just walk up and punch him hard enough to break the villain without breaking a single sweat. All tension and suspense is all out the window when our poster boy jumps in the picture. No one, not a single individual could stand against him. It is fully possible in having a fun Dante while also showing that the bad guy can pose a threat. 1, 3 and 5 all show this, but the moment Nero gets beaten down to an all-time low, the bad guy is having the upper hand in the situation and everything almost seems lost. This pizza boy just walks into the room simply saying, boy, where's my sword? Even he is aware how easily he can kick everybody around. They could have had him be this OP and still make it work. If they actually showed the people in the city that they could be harmed during the battle, very much how they've depicted Superman in the past, that he has to hold back during a fight or else everyone will die. And Dante in this game is Superman strong in comparison to everyone else. But all of that happens behind the scenes with Trish in the background. And the only characters that the developers want us to care about are already going to be rescued by the dude that typed in the cheat, who's your daddy? Sorry, maybe I'm the only one thinking all of this. Like so many others, I think that, again, before the fifth game, this was the definitive depiction of Dante, but 
he's simply walking around through everything here. I love Nero's journey. It is done pretty well, showing someone being pushed into desperation because of his powerlessness, but when you have someone on his side with all the power, the villain just isn't scary anymore. He could never have won. Not against this character. Uh, so yeah, those are my views on the Son of Sparta in Devil May Cry 4. I don't know what else I can say. This video was just made, so I have something here until I'm finishing my In the Mind of Virgil. Uh, so please bear with me, I hope you can bear with me. It's also really short, I really dislike that, but hey, it's like, again, it's an appetizer. <laughs> God damn it. Now, maybe you disagree with me. Maybe all, all of my points even. But please, tell me what do you think. Do you like how they depicted him in this game? That he's just this extremely powerful? How would you have changed him if you had the power? I, I'm gonna read all the comments, I actually am. I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely interested in this because I feel like that I'm the only one having this negative view on our boy in this game. But yeah, I, I have to go back into editing my big project. Uh, so until then, I'm King Grimm, or the guy who had to remake a lot of assets for my analysis video due to corrupted files, whatever you prefer, and I'll see you guys next time. I swear, give me a few more days and it'll be out. It's just really long. And I would love to get your feedback on the length of that video, but you know, that I, it should have come out so much earlier. I'm so sorry, but hey, FTC, Kappa, don't burn me!